Oh, we've got police. ANPR interceptor. Oh, wow, okay. And we are here. Regular viewers will recognize where we are. It's uh, Nutswood South, uh, southbound on the M6. And we were here, I believe it was actually 2023. So coming up two years ago, and we were complaining about a lack of chargers. We're here, and there were two grid serve, they're 50 kilowatt dual bay. So we have on here one Chadamo, one CCS2, and that one is two CCS2 chargers. So it's a very, very poor showing for a motorway services, which is very, very busy. And of course, we just walked past the, uh, the Type 2 chargers there, which have the contactless on as well. Uh, and we were complaining about the lack of chargers. We've not been back here since. We've been to most of the other services nearby. Uh, however, what we have done, we've pulled in here, and this shows the advantage of Dave takes it on. We actually take it on, we go out and about filming, and what we found is, look at this, some chargers. This is what's going on behind the scenes. People say there's not enough chargers. Well, we don't have four charging bays anymore. We have 12 brand new grid serve chargers, believe these are the 350 kilowatts. Again, we have some Chadamo connectors in there. They're mostly CCS2, but 12 bays, four, 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 and four. No, four, four, and four, <laughs> that's it. And this is what's been going on in the background. So when people say to me, there's not enough charges, I'll wait for the infrastructure to get better. It's absolute rubbish. This is going on everywhere. Everywhere we go, particularly the M6. Now, I apologize sincerely here to people on the East Coast. Uh, we're planning a trip over to the East Coast very soon because the situation there is, uh, I'm, I'm sorry to say, it is very different. But certainly over here on the West Coast, the M6 is now getting absolutely bombarded. We went up to Gretna Green. I've never seen so many charges in my life at Gretna Green. Gretna Green, little village where people from England used to nip over the border because the wedding requirements in Scotland, which is the first village you come to, uh, were very much lower than they were in England. People could nip over the border, get married. Um, they've got uh, Apple Green, they've got uh, Ionity, uh, three Tesla superchargers, two of which are open to everyone. They've got GridServe up there. It's, a, it's a, there's about 80, 80 chargers up there in this tiny little village right on the uh, Scottish border on the M6. Uh, stunning. Just down from there, Killington, there's a, a grid serve gone in, massive installation. Uh, we've got uh, M6 coming down at Lancaster, there's a uh, grid serve gone in. Uh, this is just further down again. There's another 12 charges down here. Going, there's massive numbers going in. And people are just, they're just blind to all of this. However, psychologically now, there's something starting to happen. You see, when motorists in their petrol cars start pulling into these motorway services, what they're seeing is, they're seeing the petrol pumps, which they see everywhere, wherever they go, but they're starting to see these electric chargers everywhere. And they're seeing lots of them, and they're seeing them empty as well. Now, there's a little bit of psychology going on here. I did a lot of psychology in sales, and it's uh, so it's something to do with um, the uh, state agents. When they put up a house for sale sign or a sold sign, and people wonder why they leave the sold sign up for so long. Uh, the house is sold, why do they put up a sold sign? And it's nothing to do with it's sold. It's actually a psychological sign. As you walk to work or drive to work or take the kids to school or whatever it is, you go past these signs and they have absolutely no relevance to you whatsoever. But in your subconscious, your mind is clocking all these signs and it's counting them up. You don't know it's happening. But what happens one day, you're sat at breakfast and you're having your toast and marmalade and your coffee and you say to your partner, uh, actually, I think we need to move house. Uh, let's put our house up for sale. And your subconscious mind suddenly says to you, hey, let's use 
this estate agent because I've seen loads of sold boards up, so they must be successful. And that's subliminal advertising. In the back of your mind, all those sold boards have built up and they're now telling you that is the estate agent for you to use. These are subliminal adverts for people in petrol cars who are thinking one day over breakfast, over their toast, say, you know what? I think we might get an EV. Have a look at them anyhow. And the other partner will say, yeah, I've seen loads of charges everywhere and they're empty. Therefore, we can charge wherever we want to go. Every, every um, motorway service station I go to, I've seen loads of them all empty. So there's plenty of charging available to us. So there must be enough charges now. It's all working in the background. And this is going to start having a bigger and bigger effect into the future. So next time, when somebody down the pub says, I'm going to have an EV next time, and the, your mate says, oh, you can't charge, there are no charges everywhere. You're gonna say, in actual fact, I've seen them everywhere now, you might be wrong. It's a strange world, isn't it? But these are most welcome. So here we are, these are the ABB units, and these are 350, oh, we've got police. ANPR interceptor. Oh, wow, okay. Uh, sorry about that, I'm getting sidetracked there. Uh, 350 kilowatts. Uh, absolutely fabulous unit. Unfortunately, still let down by the 79 pence. We could really, really do with something doing about the 79 pence. It's and we've seen these units quite a, a, quite a lot around our travels now. These are the ones that seem to be going in at most of the motorway services that we see. I, th I think some of these are, um, in actual fact, uh, sort of the tail end of their stockpile, because we've also seen some of the new dual 360 kilowatt ones going in. Um, oh, the ones that flare out at the top. Yeah, yeah, those are going in, and those are the computer-controlled intelligent charging where they share, um, share the load. If two cars plug in, they'll try and balance what the car is asking for with what they can supply, and they believe that they are capable of charging faster than these are dumb ones. They just give you whatever the car asks for. So it's quite a changing landscape that we're seeing in EV charging. Yeah, we're getting more. You asked me a question a while back about AI. What's it bringing to the EV world? And I think that is one of them. It's starting to look at how can we make EV charging actually better, faster, uh, more efficient. And, and that is one of them. We saw this at T-Bay, if you remember, when they had those eight uh, V2 chargers. Oh, yes, yeah. And without increasing the power, they put in 12 V3 chargers. Well, they went from 150 kilowatt chargers up to 250. It seemed quite strange to remove perfectly usable and, and, yeah. and functioning chargers, but yeah. it, was, it was the throughput of the site, wasn't it? Yeah, but what actually happened, because it was a busy site, each of the V2s, uh, they share power. So when it's busy, uh, everyone was getting 75 kilowatts. When we put in the 12 V3s, each was capable of 250 kilowatts. But if you were fairly well charged and you just needed a top up, when you plugged into a V3, you might only be pulling 40 or 50 kilowatts. But if you were empty and you had a long range Model 3, for example, you could be pulling 150, 180, 200 kilowatts. And so it would balance out and the throughput of those 12 V3s was actually faster than the eight uh, V2s. So this is the intelligent bit that's coming in. I think it's starting to feed into the charger network now, into the computers that run these things. And there's quite a bit that changes because one of the things I notice is these are, uh, although there's two separate bays back to back, um, you don't usually see them laid out like this. Yeah, it's unusual. This, this is how a lot of people ask me about uh, towing caravans. Um, these are unusual because of the layout. Um, I, I only just noticed it, but this has a, on this bay here, has a charger uh, with the plugs at the top and the bottom, whereas that one has the chargers in the middle. So if you're towing a caravan, you could come and your charging point is at the front of the car, you could pull into this bay and this plug here is absolutely ideal for the front of the car. So for something like a Kia Nero, uh, which I think is on the front, you would have your caravan there, which unfortunately would probably block the other charger, but that's irrelevant if the charger is quiet. 
so you could use this charger. If you had something like a uh, BMW where the charge is at the back right, you might pull into this one, in which case the back of your car would be here and that plug would be great and your caravan would be where Jonas is filming. So you've got to think that's a deliberate design decision it, it because must be. they, they alternate between the they uh, do. different designs. And they do the same here. So there's some thought gone into this for, um, and we think it's, well, I'm thinking at the moment it's for caravanning, but I've recently been watching um, the electric trucker who's a lorry driver in Germany, a chap called Tobias. Got a fascinating channel, by the way. Have a look him up. It's uh, Electric Trucker uh, on YouTube. Um, but he actually, uh, he, he's got one of these massive trucks, 90-foot trailers or whatever they are. Uh, but he unhitches and he comes and charges at uh, mostly Ionity because they're the higher power ones uh, and GridServe aren't over there as yet. But he pulls his cab, uh, he drops the trailer off, but he pulls his cab into these sorts of chargers. And the cab obviously is not a lot wider than a normal car. It can't be because they're not allowed on the road. So he would pull into a charger like this and this would be ideal for him. And so again, uh, he said some of the uh, big cabs they have, the Scania's and the Volvo's and the DAF's, some of them have the plug on the left side uh, and some of you have it on the right. So once again, if this is for um, going to be used for lorries in the future, uh, or semis as they call them in the States, then this split up between charging there and here is absolutely ideal. As a yeah, it wouldn't be this particular location because I think you'd still struggle to get it in through the, the very tight entrance, but this sort of um, layout, the drive-through layout you're talking about. Yeah, I, I think, and also here, I suspect, uh, there's a big sign saying no lorries in this bit. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but the principle is, is the same. If you're putting these in, then you need to give a, a thought for uh, who's going to be using it. Uh, but yeah, very interesting thought that caravans now, and again, they'll probably have a sign, no caravans and direct them down there. And you think, how on earth do you, have, do you come and charge your car if you've got a caravan? So maybe it'll send you down there to go and drop your caravan off, then you can drive all the way back up here, charge your car, and then drive down there, pick it up. Well, I think they're so limited on space that those uh, <laughs> caravans do take up uh, quite a bit of space yeah. there. But to, just, just to finish off this section, um, this is happening all over the place. We are seeing so many of these charges going in. Uh, a lot of them are grid serve as well. But uh, you know, for people who are saying uh, there's just not enough charging infrastructure, uh, talking through your hat, there are places in the country where there aren't enough chargers. So if you are up in the Northeast or anywhere in the country and you really are not served very well with the charging network at the moment, uh, drop us a note in the comments down below. Let us know where in the country you really are struggling for uh, chargers and we'll get ourselves in the car, we'll go and have a look and we'll do a little bit of digging around. We'll find out who is gonna be there, who, what plans they've got for putting in chargers and we'll see if we can find is there an answer to this in the future? Well, it wasn't that long ago that Preston, we were talking about it being an <laughs> EV desert and uh, that yeah. situation has changed quite rapidly. Yeah, we've got Instavolt gone in, we've got the uh, Osprey's gone in and now just outside Preston, we've got the Tesla supercharger. Uh, we've got a load of um, EV on the move gone in. Uh, it's, it's dramatically changed in the last six months. Uh, so yeah, it's, uh, it's happening all over the place. So uh, it is a changing situation. And like I said in a previous video, from when you decide to put one in, there's probably a, a year long process of legal and uh, planning applications and everything else, applications to the uh, grid before you can even start working. And then obviously like in Sainsbury's in Preston, there's the groundwork then that has to go in. Uh, and so there's quite a long process that can take up to a couple of years before you finally have that day where they plunk your charger in and turn the switch on and you can start using it. So some of the areas where there are big blank spots at the moment, they probably won't be blank 
for that much longer. Well, I think a, a, an interesting point there is that we didn't know that this insulation had come in. We were just driving past and decided yeah. to, to stop in. So those people that think, oh, well, they don't have EV chargers at my uh, nearest services or my favourite services that I want, actually, you probably want to pop back there and have a look because there's a good yeah. chance that they're already in there. And the other thing, we're just starting to see for the first time a couple of the motorway signs are now starting to advertise GridServe or Tesla or whoever it is. So when you're driving up, it says services ahead and you'll see grid serve. That's interesting. They don't tell you how many, and it could be just two of the, uh, two of them, but um, you're starting to see them advertised. And of course, um, it is EV on the move who have these big pylons with the illuminated sign up above, which actually gives you the price in their case. I think they're the only ones I've seen that do that. Yeah. So it's all changing, and that's the nice thing about it. So for now, that's it. It's just starting to rain. We've got to protect the camera because it's, a bit it's not a waterproof one. So <laughs> I'll say thanks very much for watching. I'm Dave. If you've enjoyed it, click the like button. If you'd like to see more, subscribe. We're going to get in out of the rain. Thanks very much. <laughs>